Oh no. Started. Nope, that title is not a troll. If you're unfamiliar, The Inquisition is the last episode of The Amazing World of Gumball, Season 6. It originally aired June 24th, 2019, which, if you've lost track, was five years ago. Now you feel as old as I do. At current, The Inquisition is the last episode of Gumball. But for all we know, it might actually be the last episode of Gumball forever, because the show currently is in a state of flux, largely due to this guy here. An Amazing World of Gumball movie was announced back in 2021. IMDB says it's expected in the December of this year, but that could mean literally anything, and there's very sparse news about it. A Season 7 has also been teased, uh, but that was revealed by someone who no longer works on the show, and it'll be released next year, or the year after that. One episode of the seventh season, called The Burger, was revealed at the Annecy International Animation Film Festival, but it's not available to the public, and it might not even be finished. It's also impossible to Google, because every time you do, it links you to the episode The Menu, uh, in which Richard eats a bunch of burgers to be able to order a secret burger item, but it is not the episode The Burger, which is what I am looking for at Google. If you want to know the state of any Gumball continuation, you're asking the wrong guy here. To be fair, asking anyone at this point is probably the wrong guy to ask. So, to be safe, I'm going to say that The Inquisition is the finale of The Amazing World of Gumball. For now which is not to be confused with the finale, which was the last episode of season two. And as a finale, the Inquisition might be one of the most controversial cartoon finales of all time, next to Things Change from Teen Titans. And the reason for that is, well, the most known thing about the Inquisition. It ends on a cliffhanger. Let me explain. This here is Rob. He started out as a background character early on, and at some point vanished into the void. This is something that actually happens in a lot of shows, actually, where early on they have characters that don't come back and are never referenced again. Uh, TV Tropes calls this Chuck Cunningham Syndrome, which was named after a character from Happy Days. Gumball did this with a couple of characters, but as the series went on, it became more and more familiar with the idea that it was a television show. And I don't mean this in a meta sense. I mean this in, like, a lore sense. The premise of the show, especially in Season 5 and 6, is that the amazing world of Gumball is a show. The Vegging, for example, asks the question, what if our main characters did nothing for a day? And the answer is, the universe forces something to happen. Because if nothing happened for an entire episode, we wouldn't be watching a very good show, now would we? Four to six more days later. Exactly. Rob was thrown into the void because he didn't have a role in the world of Elmore. That is, until he was brought back and became the nemesis, bent on destroying Gumball. However, as the series goes on, he becomes increasingly aware of something. Rob knows that something bad is going to happen, and throughout the last leg of the series, he's trying to figure out what it is and how to stop it. See ya in the future, Rob! But there is no future. My interpretation is that the show is at risk of cancellation, which, for the characters in a TV show, is literally the apocalypse. There's more to it, obviously. But this is the best I can do to summarize 240 episodes of lore in, like, three minutes. But the important thing to note, I think, is that there is a surprising amount of lore for a mostly episodic cartoon. We're not talking about SpongeBob SquarePants, where, for example, Patrick's Rock is suddenly a turtle after 25 years. Uh, yes, SpongeBob is 25 years old now. This all culminates in the Season 6 finale, The Inquisition. And at present, this is probably up there as one of the most hated episodes of the entire show. I might not be remembering this perfectly, but from what I recall, before this episode came out, The Amazing World of Gumball was growing in popularity. It was never on the level of, say, Adventure Time, but it was one of the most popular Cartoon Network shows of its time. It was getting rave reviews both overall and for single episodes, like The Choices or The Origins. Then The Inquisition came out, and while it obviously didn't kill the fandom, Gumball is still well-liked, I do believe that it ended up killing off a lot of the hype. It left a bitter taste in a lot of fans' mouths, which kind of clouded the good times of a lot of those former episodes. It's the effect that a bad finale can do. They end up being one of the first things that the public talks about when they go on about shows like Malcolm in the Middle or How I Met Your Mother. It's not just that it's a sour note, it's the last note of the song, and it's very memorable by default. Now, unlike those other examples, The Inquisition is technically not the finale of the show. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Season 7 might come out sometime next year. 
Although, the one episode that has been revealed is not a continuation of the Inquisition. So, for this review, I could make the very, very easy argument that this episode is really, really good, even due to the cliffhanger, because at some point in the future, it might not be an unresolved cliffhanger. However, by this point, it's probably been made clear, I'm not the kind of guy who likes taking the easy road. My argument is this. Even with the cliffhanger factored in, I still think that the Inquisition is a great episode and a damn good finale. I will hold this episode up as a great finale, even if this really is the end of the amazing world of Gumball, and we never get anything from the franchise ever again. And I I'm being dead serious on this. I understand that's a strange opinion, but I have to admit, I'm kinda weird when it comes to my opinions on media sometimes. For example, and I know this is going to be a very strange opinion, I'm the only guy on Earth who actually likes getting spoilers. Yeah, seriously. I actually really like knowing just about everything I can about a story or a piece of art before going in to see it. That's not to say that I don't know why people don't like spoilers. I totally get why people want to go in with a blind experience. You only get the complete unknown once, and things like plot twists are so much more impactful if you don't know what you're in for. It's a lot better for the emotional side of viewing film and television. There are reasons that people don't like spoilers, and I totally understand that, and I completely respect that. Meanwhile, I'm the guy who reads the synopsis before going into the cinema, because, believe it or not, it actually helps my enjoyment with a piece of media. The best way I can describe it is by comparing it to a roller coaster. From the ground, you can see each beat and twist and turn of the entire ride. None of it is a surprise. But knowing that each of these twists and turns and hills coming up, it prepares you, and it helps build anticipation. As a writer myself, I like to see how the story is progressing as it's progressing. I like to see the build-up as it happens, knowing the effect that they're going for. I like to know foreshadowing as it happens. I get more out of something by knowing what they're trying to do up ahead. And of course, that's a just me thing. And I know that's a little bit esoteric for most people, but I do think that there's a reason I like spoilers that might be a little bit more universal. Dude, you saved me from a huge disappointment. That movie had the worst ending in the galaxy. If a part of a movie is bad, or the twist of an episode is bad, knowing it up front helps me just not care. The first time that I watched The Inquisition was back when it came out in 2019, and I went in with no foreknowledge. I don't think I even knew this was the last episode, and when I found that out, I was very much disappointed. That's how it ends. That's how it might have ended forever. And at first, I did not like this episode. However, upon re-watching this episode now, I obviously knew what was going to happen for this viewing. And when I knew what was coming, it helped me focus on everything else about this episode. And when I did that, I realized how fantastic this episode actually is. Like, if this has to be the Gumball finale, I think it does a lot of things right. First of all, in a world of every single style of animated characters, 2D, 3D, claymation puppet, we finally get something completely new. A live-action character. Now, we have seen humans on Gumball before, but they've always been on television or behind a screen. We've never seen a human being in the flesh, interacting with the characters. This is Superintendent Evil, played by Garrick Hagen, and he does a really good job. The Inquisition doesn't have the most uncommon plotline in the world. A new teacher or authority figure coming in and telling all the kids that they've got to be good and conform? I've seen this a lot. Recess and Hey Arnold both off the top of my head. But there's something about Gumball that just makes them choosing this plotline so much more impactful. First of all, despite Evel's lines being funny, the guy is a damn good actor, and he really pulls off the intimidation factor. I am here to correct your outlandish behavior. Any questions regarding my methods will also be severely punished. But I think the reason that this episode is the best version of this plotline that I've ever seen is because Evel is a human, and the other characters are cartoon characters. And that's what Evel is trying to correct. Now, if you're wondering why I decided to talk about this episode now of all times, it's because I was marathoning the entire series for CN Real. It was the first time I had watched every episode in succession, and when you marathon the whole series, you really get to come and know each of the characters and what they are, and what that means. Like, there's an episode about Alan getting an operation, and we learn about what being a balloon actually means in this world. We see the episode where Penny comes out of her shell and becomes a shape-shifting fairy, and another episode where she defends that. All of the characters being everything is a lot about what makes the series interesting and special. And the mission of our villain in this episode is to take all of that away. It's a perfect conflict for the amazing world of Gumball. And it gets the emotions going. 
right from the get-go, too. So, Sussy. She is probably my least favorite character in all of Gumball. Her main shtick is being gross, and her spotlight episode, The Weirdo, is unbearable for that reason alone. The only time that Sussy works as a character, in my opinion, is when she's not being Sussy. Like, at the end of the answer. This school and its students is in breach of every conceivable rule. Including the rules of decency. And then, just that sad sigh. It kind of made me feel something. William's another character I'm not all too high on. He was usually just in the background, and his last spotlight literally had him try to frame Gumball. But seeing him try to painfully enter the door the quote-unquote normal way, it hits you in the feels. I think it's the benefit of a show having been running for so long. It's not just the new strict teacher going off at a random background guy. It's this character going off on Banana Joe, a character we've seen time and time and time again, who we've really gotten to know over the course of 200 episodes. And then the episode gets freaky. Gumball, Darwin, you're next. Gumball is no stranger to using horror elements, and this part is all very reminiscent of the joy. Except, maybe even one level up. We got a real Body Snatchers thing going on here. And we also got to see Rocky get electrocuted. With the cinematic angles, the background music, the shading, this would be the most disturbing that Gumball has ever gotten, if it wasn't for those fucking turtles. And their transformation is almost complete. Almost? Oh, okay, yeah, that, that might one-up it. Evil here isn't content on just making them normal, boring kids. He wants to make them live-action characters. And as an animation fan, I really do appreciate this next part. Because it's all about Gumball and Darwin outsmarting and outmaneuvering everyone with strictly cartoon gags. It's very clever, and it really demonstrates what they're fighting for. Also, it should go without saying that the human designs are pretty good as well. I think they really did tap into what the fandom imagined the humanized versions of each of these characters would have looked like. And you could tell who each person is supposed to be at just a glance. Although Gumball might not be able to. The jokes really are on point in this episode, too. I just want to say that. It's not the funniest episode of Gumball, but it does get a few good laughs. Like, the fact that they literally call the superintendent Evil, and Darwin tries to make an anagram out of it like his name isn't evil. Also, Evil just running away from the fistfight also kills me. They find out it's Rob in disguise, and if they just ended it here, I don't think that anyone would disagree that this is a really good episode. Like, before this point, it packs some punches. And even if it was the last episode still, I think people could accept it as a last episode. Just a more typical last episode instead of a grand finale, which isn't unheard of for a show. But that's not how the episode ends, or how the episode doesn't end. And just ignoring parts of an episode that we don't like isn't how we review things critically, is it? Rob tries to explain what's happening, uh, and then Tina beats into a pulp. Everyone leaves, and Rob says, It's starting, before he falls into static. First of all, I just want to say, Clever callback with the pigtail. They gave him one in the future, and it's incorporated into his design here, but it's never commented on. I just want to say that that's a very nice attention to detail. I can see why this pissed people off. Obviously. Hell, I'll even say that when it first came out, it pissed me off. But even if this is the end, I would not put this episode anywhere near some of the most infamous finales ever. Because, well, for starters, this is actually a good episode otherwise. Secondly, while Gumball does have continuity and stuff, it is entirely possible to watch through the entire show without ever caring about the overarching plot. You know, just going in for a laugh without really caring about the characters as characters. It's a comedy show first and foremost, and anything else is really just a bonus. There's also the possibility where you don't have to see this cliffhanger as a cliffhanger. What the show is clearly building up to, at least in my own interpretation, is the show's own cancellation. The apocalypse for a television show. The future is the best companion piece to this one. Rob kidnaps Banana Barbara and has her try to paint the future, to which she keeps painting static over and over and over again. And at the end of the episode, she says this. See ya in the future, Rob. But there is no future. Whether it be season seven or a movie, I feel very safe in saying that that would be the conflict of any Gumball continuation. The literal end. And well, you, you can't really end the apocalypse happily, can you? Even if the episode has everything, everyone being all hunky-dory happy, and every loose plot thread all tied up in a neat little bow, the show keeps building up the fact that it is a television show inside and out, and when it's over, it's over. 
I don't think you can end the show without at least a little bit of darkness at this point. If Rob didn't say, it started, and maybe instead say, we're cancelled, I think the episode still would have been controversial, but a lot less so. Like, it'd be a dark meta joke, and it probably puts the ending on the level of, like, Dinosaur's finale, but honestly, it would have had at least a chance of working, and if something did continue on, you could have just gotten the meta, we got renewed. It's not out of the realm of plausibility. And at the very least, that offers more obvious closure. And it's not like Gumball to never end things darkly. There are a ton of episodes where the ending is something randomly exploding or characters on the verge of death. I believe that with the right comedic timing, it could have worked beautifully. But maybe I'm just seeing what I want to see in this. That's always a possibility as well. But that's the thing about art. It is what you make of it. The fact that the Inquisition and the Inquisition's ending is so contentious, in my view, speaks very well to what Gumball managed to accomplish in its sixth season run. I can think of plenty of other finales that I think are worse than this that don't get anywhere near as much shit. Chowders and Camp Laszlo's immediately come to mind, because they ended up giving a lot more answers than I think anyone ever wanted. The other end of the spectrum is the Victor and Valentino finale, which answered so much that the entire last episode was just a clusterfuck in the end. None of them get the hate that this one does, and while being obscure might count for Victor and Valentino, I know how loved Chowder is on the internet. I'm not saying that the Inquisition is like, big picture show good, it's not that good, but the episode is more or less what I'm looking for in a standard last episode of The Amazing World of Gumball. Minus the other Watersons, but that's neither here nor there. It's not big picture show, but I do think it is A Fistful of Ed, which also served as a finale for Ed, Ed and Eddie, and was an episode that I really happen to like, even though that one is also controversial for reasons. I do hope that, whether my theorizing is right or wrong, we eventually do get this continuation of Gumball. While the show was getting a little bit rockier in its sixth season, it still had great classic episodes and was largely solid. I do think that they could pull off a seventh easily, with the same quality that they managed to attain up to this point, which is very rare for shows in general. Seriously though, even if I'm talking crazy, I think you should give this episode another watch sometime. It's one of those things that I think is legitimately better on rewatch, when you know what you're getting into. And if you don't think so, that's fine too. I, I can't make believers out of everyone. And I wouldn't be surprised either. It's a monumentally difficult task. And I think any finale of Gumball is going to be at least a little bit contentious. Because it's hard to end one of the greatest Cartoon Network shows ever made.